All right, and now we're going to begin with the town council candidates uh, for the second council district, Cassandra Lems, Regina Srivastova, if I mispronounce it, please yell, uh, Peter Zuckerman, David Yudon Chang, Veronica Lurvey, Marianne Dalamonte, and Dina DiGiorgio. And uh, the, just as we did with the previous larger group, in order to save time, we're going to start at the left end uh, for the beginning, for the opening, and work our way down. All right? So we will begin with Ms. Lems. Hi, I'm Cassandra Lems, the Green Party candidate for Town Council District 2. Everybody on this platform is going to tell you that the most important issue facing us is high taxes. It's not. Your property is going to be worthless when we have no water that we can drink that's safe and when the South Shore Beach comes up to the Long Island Expressway. It's climate change, and I am the Green Party candidate. We're all about the climate. Uh, and the environment, but we do have other concerns. I just wanted to mention that uh, since I do have uh, plans and ideas about reducing taxes, I don't tend to focus on those in this campaign. I just want to run briefly through a couple of the issues that I'm running on. Uh, number one, I want to reduce noise and air pollution in my district. In particular, gas-powered leaf blowers should be completely banned. They pollute the air. They cause deafness in not only the people who work with them, but in people nearby. Uh, and also, I want to reduce the air pollution and noise from overhead jets. Um, I know that the town has no authority over those jets, but we can be screaming louder about it and uh, trying to get people to fly uh, around us and not directly over us every single time. I have only 30 <coughs> seconds to go through six more issues. Um, we should not opt out of marijuana sales when marijuana is legalized. We should reverse the anti-BBS legislation that was passed by many of the local legislatures and the town of North Hempstead. And we should impede the spread of 5G transmitters. I have more issues, but I'll stop. Thank you. Ms. Srivastova. Good evening, everyone. I thank the League of Women Voters for inviting me here tonight, actually inviting all of us here tonight. It takes time and energy to build such kind of culture where we all can come, share our thoughts, and participate in healthy discussion. So I really thank you for that. And um, people say that uh, uh, our experiences, they sometimes give us an objective in life. Our experiences make us who we are. And you know, I would like to share quickly one uh, experience that uh, when, I, uh, when I came to this country years back, and it was winter in December. I was walking down the street in the uh, afternoon. It was very chilly, and I was just wearing a light sweater and a shawl kind of thing. For winter in India, that was enough. For here, I was very cold, and I was kind of shivering. And one lady who was just passing by, she was lo looking at me very lovingly. And she came to me, and she said, my dear, do you have a jacket? I said, uh, you know, before I say anything, she said, OK. And she took me to a local store. She helped me picking a jacket. I had almost like 20, 25 bucks in my pocket and I got my first jacket. I felt wrong. I have so much of gratitude for person who helped me at the right time. So, you know, that gave me a lesson in life and an objective in life to work if you can have that opportunity and if you can, if you can make things better. So that is my objective. And I have so much of gratitude to that person and to everyone. I live in Manhasset Hills and very close to Clinton v. Martin Park. Uh, the residents were very happy because there were the renovations were going, going on, but we were very disappointed to know that even the project was not completed, the contractors declared themselves bankrupt. 
and now it, it is mismanagement uh, of finances or miscommunication or corruption, I don't know. But because of this mismanagement, uh, our taxes are going high. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Zuckerman. Good evening. Thank you to the League of Women Voters and everyone who's here tonight. You know, as a young man, I grew up in a household. My mother was a te school teacher. My father worked long days and many nights. My grandfather was a letter carrier for the post office. And they taught me that serving in a position of public trust, serving in political office, is the highest honor that anyone could have. And I take this job very seriously. In this, in this approximate six years that I've been at the town of North Hempstead and served with Supervisor Judy Boswell, we attained, through Moody's, a AAA bond rating. That is the highest bond rating that a municipality can have. That is the highest bond rating that the town of North Hempstead has ever had. We've wiped $32 million in debt off the books. We, every year prior to election day, we vote on our budgets. Okay. We also stay within the tax cap. Money Magazine has voted the town of North Hempstead as one of the top eight places for seniors to be. I am very proud to be the councilman of the town of North Hempstead, and I believe that my background and experience as an attorney, as an attorney, as a trustee before I was a councilman, Serves me, serves me properly. It's very important that we maintain our services for our residents, but yet maintaining costs and keeping costs at a reasonable level. And we must do that all the time. You know, I heard a lot of things about uh, people making complaints about Clint Board Park. And, you know, I'm an attorney, so I can sit here and I can tell you honestly, without attorney speak, that we are in the middle of the lawsuit, okay? We cannot comment publicly publicly on this. What I can tell you is the lawsuit is proceeding in due course. Okay, It's a crucial time in this lawsuit as in any lawsuit. Anything that I say or any of the other candidates who are currently at the town of the and say can be used in that lawsuit. So unfortunately we cannot speak about it. It's easy to sit up here and poke holes at it but I won't sit here and stand by it without making a comment. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Chang? Good evening. My name is David Chang. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for inviting us to speak this evening. I would also like to thank my family, my three little kids who go to the school system here. Uh, they are here right with us as well and for, for, for letting me run for office. Um, I've been a stay-at-home dad for the last nine years. I stayed at home because I had to take care of my mom with, who had Alzheimer's uh, and, and take care of my son who was a preemie. I decided to run for office because I, need, I wanted to do something for the community. I felt that the community was being attacked by outside forces. Um, Manhasset, uh, Great Neck is a beautiful town to live in. Uh, North Hempstead is a beautiful place to live in. Because of that, there's a lot of forces outside that wanted to come in. Marijuana was one issue that I had to stand up and, and fight. Because I think you know, legalizing it and putting it in front of the kids is two separate issues. I don't want the, 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 the marijuana to be a bad influence and be a gateway drug to your kids. So I stood up for the community. I, I fought alongside the community. We rezoned the, the, the marijuana company away from the school. You can choose to smoke it at home. You can choose it for medical purposes. I have no problem with that. But I wanted to stand up and fight for the community. And my background, I was the youngest of six kids, came to the US broke with debt. And I worked my way through college. I paid for NYU. I came out with a finance degree. I worked on Wall Street for 18 years. I'm not a lawyer turned politician, okay? I'm not the typical politician. This is my first time running for office. If you guys vote for me, we will make history. My background in finance will help the town. I think the town is run inefficiently. The politicians can rest on the law that says we have AAA ratings. However, that money is, should be, the, 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 the town's Taxpayers should be thanked for that, not the politicians whose uh, job is to sit on it. I think the town should be run more efficiently, taxes should be lowered, or uh, the services have to be, has to be improved. So I think if I'm given the chance, I can improve the services that you get for your dollar. Thank you. Ms. Lurvey. Thank you to the League of Women Voters and thank you everybody for being here. Um, if you had told me uh, last year that I'd be sitting here already the councilwoman for the town of North Hempstead, I wouldn't have believed you. And if you would have told me that in the year 2019, one of the most partisan and vitriolic years that we can remember, that I would have been appointed by the town board, Republican and Democrat alike, 
I really wouldn't have believed you, but here I am. Since January, I have been proud to represent the 4th District. I want to tell you a little bit about my priorities as your councilwoman as, and as we, and what I hope to continue in, after November. Um, our town is uniquely positioned to affect the quality of life of its residents through the services that it provides. We have also taken leadership on matters of great importance, such as calling out anti-Semitism and intolerance in all of its forms. Supervisor Bosworth and the town board, as you have heard, have made this possible all the, at the same time as holding the line on taxes. But there's, beyond that, there are other things that are very important that are important to me. Our neighborhoods are facing new challenges. We need to strive for responsible growth, which means filling empty storefronts without overburdening our schools and our infrastructure. And we need to make our, safe, our streets safe for pedestrians. And we need to protect our environment, our groundwater, our waterfront, our air quality, noise pollution, as well as our tree density. And we need to take steps to protect the most vulnerable. We need to address the challenges faced by our seniors, by our veterans, and by our next generation. And this is a fight that I'm ready to continue. Through every effort I've ever been involved in to serve the community, the ability to build consensus has been critical to get things done. As your town councilwoman, my mission has been to use everything I've learned as an attorney and as an activist to build consensus and to serve the fourth district. I'm excited to be with you and I look forward to a thoughtful debate. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Delamonte. Good evening. Thank you to the League of Women Voters and to everyone who is here with us tonight that I hope will be an informative debate. My family has lived in Port Washington for four generations. I'm running for town council because I want to help strengthen our community so the next generation can live, thrive, and raise their families here too. I am not the typical polished political candidate. I worked in the music industry for 14 years where I was responsible for keeping costs and spending down. I brought people together and helped find solutions that allowed for compromise, growth, and inclusion. When I left that career, I first saw the challenges that our community faced and decided to get involved to do my part to make things better. And after 15 years of that involvement, I'm fortunate to have worked with so many passionate leaders in our community. I want to build upon that work and bring my experience serving the community, responsibly managing, spending, and bringing people together to the North Hampstead Town Board. I've been knocking on doors every week and getting to speak to so many of our neighbors. And the number one question I keep getting is, why are you doing this? Why are you running? The answer is easy. I'm doing this for our community. And I can't say it strongly enough, my belief that everyone's voice matters. And as your next council person, I will be the bridge between our community and the town board. I will give all of my constituents a place to be heard because town hall needs to hear your voice. Like Supervisor Bosworth, who has endorsed my candidacy, I will be transparent, accessible, and truly concerned about your needs. I will ensure that everyone, and not just a select few, have a seat at the table. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be with you here tonight to talk more about how we will accomplish that together. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Giorgio. Yeah, thank you. Good evening. I'm Dina DiGiorgio, and I'm serving in my eighth year as a councilwoman. Uh, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting us tonight. I want to thank all of you for coming out, and I want to congratulate all of the people that are sitting at this table. It takes a lot to throw your hat in the ring in politics, especially uh, in light of what's going on in our nation today. Let's face it, politics has consumed us as a nation. I feel it as much as all of you do. It's frightening, it's exhausting, and it's toxic. Yet, in light of how difficult it is to be in politics today, I made a decision to seek a third term in office as a Republican. I really want to tell you why I did that, and in order to tell you that, I'm going to tell you a short story about an email I received last weekend and my response. The email was from a supporter who told me that she was voting for me again. 
And I was appreciative of that. But then she went on to say that she really thought about voting for my opponent to send a message to the Republicans and the president in Washington, D.C. She wanted them to know what their behavior is going to cost them. She, like a lot of people, including me, was not, is not a fan of the president. I wasn't really sure how to respond at first, and I was a little taken aback. But I had to respond, and in doing so, I had to say why I wanted the job for another four years. I also, national politics is divisive, polarizing, and damaging. I told her that voting for my opponent would not send any message to the Republican Party or the president, because I was pretty sure that they don't care whether I'm the councilwoman. During my eight years, I have done my best to respond to every phone call, every email, and concern of all of my constituents, regardless of whether they support me or not. I look forward to continuing to do that as I go forward and as I, or I enter my third term as your councilwoman. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the first question. How would you improve conditions in the town building department? And we'll start with uh, Mr. Zuckerman. So the building department is something that we've tried to improve since I walked into office uh, approximately six years ago. We've added more examiners. We're adding technological things to try to make things more efficient. The main thing is that we need to make things accessible. We have the applicant advocate. Lauren Suba, who works in that department, and she can answer your questions with respect to walking people through the application process. I can tell you that my door is always open because we want to help people. We want to make sure they understand the process. I think sometimes there's a lot of misconceptions because people don't understand that when you're talking about the different building projects, you're talking about Nassau County Building Department or the Nassau County Fire Marshal or things like that that, that bog down a, a particular building project. And these are things that are very important, but yet they bog things down. Then you also often have situations where architects and builders are given an omission letter, and they have to understand how to comply with that. So we're committed to making it better, we're committed to making everything user friendly, and we'll continue to making the building department accessible for our constituents. Thank you. Ms. Lurvey. So, I would say that I would support looking into any ways to streamline the permitting process in front of the buildings department. It is one of the things that comes up on um, a regular basis. But also I have learned that there are certain tracks, different tracks in the building department. Um, relatively simple permits get looked at immediately. Minor um, renovations such as you know swimming pools or finished cellars or kitchens, um, they take about three weeks to get looked at where things get really bogged down are on the major renovations. Um, in those renovations, I've had people call me and when I've sat down with them and the buildings department, it turns out it's not always the town, it's not always the buildings department. We are the easy one to, to blame. Um, now I go back to say, I'm still I, streamlining the, the code is something that, that I support, I think with my, um, experience on the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Village of Kensington, I think we can look through and look at the code and see which um, provisions should be updated so that people don't have to go to the BZA. But I also find that sometimes it's the contractors that are giving people the runaround. Sometimes it's multiple layers of omission let letters, as Councilman Zuckerman said. Um, there are, you know, we can't control the quality of the architects and the contractors. And oftentimes, what's happening more and more is that, especially in Manhasset, is that it's Nassau County Department of Health that's requiring septic system upgrades. And that's not within the control of the town. Thank you. Mr. Giorgio. So as the Supervisor Bosworth said in her answer, the, building, the town has made great strides in the building department, but we do have a lot more to do. Um, the one thing that I think is going to be a tremendous help is the new technology, which will allow residents to access their status of their building permit online. We'll be able to 
upload in for missing information or and email questions. And it should give people a comfort level to know where they are in the line. So we approved the um, software quite a while ago. Uh, its implementation is taking a very long time. So I'm definitely committed to understanding why it hasn't been done yet and doing whatever I can to make sure that it, it starts, uh, we, we get it online. One of the other things that I think is important is a, a few uh, months ago, a group of local architects reached out to me and they wanted to have a meeting at town hall with me. And they have a lot of questions and frustrations with the building department. I met with them. Uh, and then right after that meeting, I met with Commissioner Niewender who's our building commissioner. And I shared with him some of the frustrations, the suggestions about how things could be streamlined. And he committed to having more meetings and having more dialogue so that everyone's expectations are clearer. And I think with respect to complicated projects, big home renovations, new buildings, new commercial projects, opening the lines of communication will be much better, and I look forward to being able to spearhead a committee that will be able to do that. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Delamonte. We can always do better. You can look at anything. You could always make it better. What I want to do is I actually want to take an application from a resident in District 6 and also a commercial um, someone that's going to go into the building department, and I physically want to go with them through the entire process. I want to learn the process from beginning to end. The one thing I did at Epic Records, I looked at procedures, I looked at policies, I evaluated them. Then I would take my recommendations, I'd bring them to the town board, we would meet regarding them, meet with the building department, and find a way that could be a better solution for certain things. But be, I need to know the process from start to finish. And I want to follow an application on a residential level and on a commercial level from start to finish so I know the process. And then I can make an educated decision and talk to the town board about what we can do to make our building department better. Thank you. Mr. Vistava. One of the, my neighbors, they bought house close to my house, and they took three years uh, just for the con in construction. And when I was asking them how, how come, they said it takes a lot of time to get the permit. Another friend in my neighborhood, she said she took six months to get a permit for some renovation. So it is taking a lot of time and one year, two years, three years, that's what I have been listening and hearing. I, I think we definitely need to adopt the new technology that will help us and we need to study. Of course, if I'm there, I will study and we need to understand the loopholes and fix it and address the issue. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lems. Well, I have three separate ideas. Number one, consolidate all of the rules, regulations, permits, according to who's responsible for what, and have a clear cut database that everyone can refer to, like what do I need to do in what order. Second of all, have every council person spend a day, of perhaps once a month, in the building department to observe and learn what goes on there to see what the problems are. And maybe solutions will suggest themselves. And number three, I'd like to see each application have a hostess, a, someone to take responsibility for making sure that that permit gets issued or, or turned down if it needs to be turned down, but more than likely that it gets walked through the correct channels and that it doesn't fall through the cracks and that somebody owns that certificate and is, is, is watching over it so that you don't get passed around from person to person and nobody knows what's happening with your permit application. Mr. Chang. Thank you. Well, for me, I think that uh, a, lot, a lot of my neighbors complain about the building department. Uh, a lot of the people on Manhasset Connection, which is the, the local uh, Facebook connection, uh, complain about 
Carvel now opening for two years because of permitting issues. We have so many vacancies on Northern Boulevard. We have vacancies on uh, Plandome Road. We have vacancies on Middle Neck Road. The reason for that is because of this inefficiency. I think that the building department should, each person that works there should have a scorecard. They should be graded on how many permits that they put through. And also the, the, the head of the building department should be graded. I mean, we, we, cannot, we cannot have to run the town as a business. We cannot run it uh, the way it's run right now. These people have to be held accountable. I mean, you can get a permit much faster in New York City and how many residents live there? Nassau County should be doing better and, and town of North Hempstead should be doing better. Thank you. The next question is specifically asked of Ms. DiGiorgio and Ms. Delamonte. So we'll have them answer first and then anyone else who chooses to can answer after that and will you let me know if you want to. Uh, first, Ms. DiGiorgio. Well, all right. <laughs> it, would, it would be nice if you, it would be nice if you knew what the question was. <laughs> yes. That's a good start. It's getting. Sorry. What is your vision for the waterfront district in Port Washington? Do you support changing the current zoning code? And if so, how? Well, since I instituted a moratorium 18, years, uh, 18 months ago, because it feels like 18 years ago, uh, <laughs> for the express purpose of, okay. of, of modernizing and updating our BW nice. zone, I certainly support uh, changing our, our current zoning code. Um, we've been having community meetings, discussions uh, for the last 18 months about what everyone wants to see in the waterfront. Uh, the proposal, I think it makes sense to limit height, density, make sure that sight lines are protected, and to definitely take into consideration the tremendous amount of traffic uh, that that area sees, particularly in the summer. Um, as part of our process, uh, I was asked by Supervisor Bosworth to lead a steering committee comprised of property owners, local stakeholders, the meetings are open to the public. Uh, we should be shortly receiving RFPs from various planners who specialize in uh, waterfront zoning. And the goal of the RFP is to select a planner who can work with the town, the steering committee, and the public to arrive at a vision that isn't just my vision, but it's the community's vision. Um, I think the process has been very collaborative and it's been wonderful so far and I'm confident that if we bring in an independent third party expert, hopefully that person will be able to build consensus among the different opinions and we'll get a great zoning code. Thank you. Ms. Delamonte. So this December will mark two years that um, there's been a moratorium in place. I agree with the moratorium being in place. What I don't agree with is when I was at a town of North Hempstead board meeting and my opponent asked a member who was not involved with the project to head the steering committee. And I got up and I spoke at the town board meeting, which I did not want to do, because I did not want to turn it political, but I had to do it. I had to say that the town of North Hempstead needs to be the one hosting these steering committee meetings. And I'm happy to say that the town of North Hempstead listened because they are the ones that are hosting these steering committees. I attended the first steering committee. There, um, I'm not allowed to sit around the round table. I have to sit in the public and there's not enough handouts for the people in the audience. So everyone around the table had a copy of the RFP so they could have an educational dis a discussion about it, and we didn't have it in the, in the audience. So we, I would make sure that everyone is around that table and that all of our voices are heard for the vision of the BW district. Thank you. Ms. Lurie, would you want to address that? I don't have anything to add. Okay, does anybody else? No? Okay, we'll go to the next question. How can we work to fight anti-Semitism in our community? 
And we'll start with Ms. Lurvie. So anti-Semitism is very personal for me. I'm Jewish and my children attend or attended the Schechter schools. Um, and um, I'm glad that the town takes lead leadership on issues of these import of, that are as important as this. Um, we need to, as part of the Not In Our Town program, we need to pledge not to stay quiet in the face of intolerance. We need to reject hatred and intolerance in all of its forms. Um, instead, I actively look for ways to have communities come together and to have people come together on a personal level because I find that that is the way to fight intolerance. Um, I was instrumental in planning a Martin Luther King Day event in Great Neck, which brought together teens and adults from the First Baptist Church, as well as Temple Israel of Great Neck and Temple Bethel. Um, and we're gonna, going to be continuing to do that on a yearly basis and growing it and bringing in more com communities and having these, these children engage in teachings about bigotry and intolerance and identity. I also recently um, helped organize a cleanup event at Whitney Pond Park, which is one of the jewels of um, the town's park system, where various communities came together to clean up and to plant trees, building bridges for the future. Thank you. Mr. Chang. I think that a, an attack on any group is an attack on all of us. So if there's an anti-Semitism or anti-Muslim uh, Islam, Islamophobia, I'm against any type of anti-Semitism. I was one of the people that actually spoke with Ms. Uh, uh, <laughs> at the event in Great Neck against anti-hate, anti-Semitism in Great Neck, one of the school events. So I am, uh, I echo whatever she said. And basically, any attack on one group is a crack on all of us. So I will stand with uh, the protective rights of, of, the, of the one being attacked. Ms. Lems. There's a song in South Pacific called You Have to Be Carefully Taught. And the song makes the point that the children are taught to be intolerant. But I think the opposite is true, too. If you teach children to be tolerant by meeting other children of other faiths, other colors, other ethnicities, they will learn that we're all just kids together and we have a lot more in common than we have uh, dividing us. Um, I think, I think uh, any, any uh, prejudice starts in children and that they can be taught and should be taught to be tolerant at least if not loving and accepting of people of other faiths. Mr. Giorgio. Bigotry and hatred should not be tolerated at all against any group whatsoever. I am very proud of our Not In Our Town initiative, uh, and I think that our town board is particularly inclusive, and we don't tolerate hatred. I think as everyone else on the panel said, it's important to teach our children to love and respect one another and look past our differences and to try to work together. We have an incredibly diverse town, all sorts of different ethnicities, nationalities, religion, and it all works together beautifully. I'm proud to be part of a board that embraces diversity and doesn't tolerate hate and bigotry and is, is a promoter of the Not In Our Town initiative. Thank you. Ms. Delamonte. I agree with everything that's been said here to this, e uh, this evening by every single um, panelist up here. I would um, work with the school district. I would go into the Port Washington School District. I would go into the nursery schools. I would go into um, the Manhasset School District. And I would teach them about the program the Town of North Sempstead has about not in our town. Because hate does not belong here in the town of North Hempstead, and it doesn't belong here in, in the world. It really doesn't. So I agree with everything that um, everyone said up here, but I really would probably go also and take that, take it on the road 
to the school districts and to the nursery schools, because just like recycling, I remember learning about recycling from my kids. They came home, they learned it in school. So let's teach the kids and let them come home and teach their parents. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Zuckerman? Sure. Hate, bigotry, discrimination is not acceptable anywhere. And I am very proud of our Not In Our Town campaign. I can tell you that anti-Semitism is something that's uh, dear and dear to me. Um, my grandmother was a survivor of the Holocaust. Um, and I remember as a young boy seeing the tattoo on her arm. And I remember asking her about it. Um, and it's something that has stuck with me for my entire life. I also went to college in uh, every university in, in Georgia. And I remember the coach of the baseball team that I was on making comments relating to me being Jewish. Um, this is not acceptable. We need to live together. We need to work together. We, we cannot allow for discrimination and hate. And we need to do all we can to, to educate our children educate everyone so that we can peacefully coexist and that we can all respect each other. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sri Vastava. Thank you. As Dina said, we are a very diverse community and we have to install these values in our children and we have to make them understand that they have to accept everyone the, the, the way they are. We, have, we should learn how to coexist and uh, you know, help each other and survive each other and have a, a peaceful and a loving life. Hate of any kind is not acceptable at all. Thank you. Okay, the next question. What are the, the question is, what are the three most important issues facing your district? Uh, one minute, one and a half minutes might not be long enough to, <laughs> to attack three, so either two or three, depending on how you can do it. Uh, we'll start with uh, Mr. Vistava. Thank you. What I think is very high cost of living is one of the main issues in our town, town of North Hempstead. And I think it's because of the second is mismanagement of finances. We need to really work on this and uh, we need to have more accountability and transparency in whatever we are doing at the government level. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Zuckerman. Well, there's definitely not enough time uh, but I would tell you that finances is something that's very important to me. And I can tell you that I'm very proud of the town, town bond rating with Moody's, AAA. That's the highest bond rating that a municipality can have. And I can tell you one thing, that we take it very seriously. Our budgets, we vote on them before election day. And we need to be accountable. And that's why we stay within the tax cap every year. That's why we reduce $32 million in debt, and I'm very proud of that. Now I have to tell you, if you think about budgets and you think about taxes, you know, my, one of my opponents has said in the past, uh, making comments about taxes. What you have to understand when you think about taxes, it's a pie, okay? And if you divide the pie, 4% of that pie goes to the town of North Hempstead. 69% goes to the school districts. 18% goes to the county and 8% goes to special districts, like garbage, water, et cetera. So 4%. So it's really, an e so the town is an easy target to say that the town uh, is, collect is taking the money. It's really not. The taxes are real largely to the school and to the county. And I can tell you we are responsible with our budgets and we are proud of it. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Ms. Delamonte. So the main issue is keeping our taxes low while maintaining our town services and our quality of life. Um, for example, helping homeowners go through the uh, building process, through the building permit, improving parking throughout the district, looking at the cost of parking tickets, and keeping our streets litter free. Also, our downtowns. We have empty stores. What I would like to do is I would like to have a round table with landlords, real estate, commercial, the town, and come together and try and figure out what is the disconnect? 
Why do we have so many empty stores in our downtowns? Let's try and figure out what we can do to get these stores filled. What we can do to have a more vibrant downtown. Because no one likes driving down the road and seeing all these empty stores. Thank you, Ms. Lurvie. So if I would say the top three priorities would be taxes. Um, when I've been canvassing over the last couple of uh, month and a half or so, that comes up a lot. And a lot has been said already about that, so I won't go into that. Um, making sure, number two, but not necessarily in that order, making sure downtowns are vibrant. And this is a multi-layer task, which requires working with many constituencies, and re it requires a talent of working with very many constituencies, because making sure that downtowns are vibrant requires, first of all, working with the different, speaking and talking and working with the different levels of government, the mayors, the trustees, and the commissioners, to determine how to make them destinations. Supervisor Bosworth talked about unveiling the cultural master plan, and that was a beginning of a discussion, a holistic discussion, about how do you work together with all of these different municipalities on the issue of downtown revitalization. But we need to go further. We need to talk about the parking issues. Those are issues in, in most of our downtowns. Addressing delays in the permitting process. Yes, we've talked about that a lot tonight also. Pedestrian safety is one of the things that I wanna focus on especially because if you have a walkable downtown, then people will more likely go to the stores and they will more likely go for, to several stores at a, at a time and beautification efforts. Um, so I've spent most of my time talking about downtowns. I would say number three is the environment. Um, it's very, very important. There's nothing that's more vision, that's more important in terms of vision than the environment. Thank you. Mr. Chang? I think the most important issue, uh, again, is everyone says is taxes. However, none of these people are from the financial industry. My background in the financial industry, I think, gives me an advantage. I think if you elect me as town council, I will go through the financial the papers line by line and see where the money's coming from and where the money's going. I wanna make sure that the town is uh, running the most efficiently and the, with the least amount of bureaucracy. I think the town is, the way it's run now, it might have triple A rating, but that's because all of the taxpayers pay their taxes on time. And also the property values are still up. Why do people move to the North Hempstead? because of the standard of living. I think the standard of living is another issue. Right now, our standard of living is always un, un, under attack because developers wanna come in and overwhelm our infrastructure. Our traffic is already jammed up on Northern Boulevard, East Shore Road. Uh, all these roads are already jammed. I'm a stay-at-home dad. When I go shopping for my kids' uh, food, I have to pick certain days, of, certain hours of the day to just leave the house. I can't even get past Northern Boulevard. So traffic is an issue. Taxes is an issue, inefficiency is an issue. There's a lot of issues. The, the building department is inefficient. I think people need to be kept help, held accountable. I think we need to hire professionals that do the job, not just pay for these jobs. I will do that. My background in finance will help the town. So I hope you will vote for me on November 5th. Thank you. Mr. Giorgio? I think that we talked about the BW zoning. That's, I think, my highest priority at the moment, we need to get that right. Uh, and the question is not about doing it fast, it's doing it right. Um, I don't agree with my opponent's characterization of the meeting, in fact. <laughs> and when the meeting was over, every single person in the room thought that the meeting was well run and well attended and that the town was on the right track. So I'm not sure what, which meeting she was at, but the meeting I was at was, was not that way. Um, the town does have low fiscal stress. The town um, does have a AAA bond rating. I'd like to see the town have a no property tax increase this year. I'd like to see a flat tax. Um, everyone makes much about staying under the tax cap and that's very important. But I think that we are in probably the best position this year to not raise taxes at all. And I think that's a big priority. And I think that plays into why everyone is, uh, why storefronts are empty, why it's difficult to get people to rent commercial space. The town does have a small portion of the tax bill, but nonetheless, it's, it's ever growing. And we need to be mindful of that. 
Um, finally, I think with respect to downtown revitalization, I've seen tremendous growth in Port Washington. We have a lot of new businesses. We have a lot of new restaurants. We have a lot of great places that are focused on experiences. I think we need to build on that. I think we need to reach out to the business owners that are doing well, that have been able to stay open, been able to stay in business and thrive, and we need to find out what they're doing correctly. Thank you. Ms. Lems. Number one, we need to preserve and protect our water aquifers. We need to stop the pollutium by pouring all the water onto our lawns, and we need to stop polluting our water aquifers so that we have drinking water in the future. Um, we need to do more to counteract the climate emergency that's happening in our, on our planet. Obviously, we can't, uh, we can't control the planet, but we can control what happens in our own town, and there's more that can be done to stop global warming. And number three, um, yes, taxes. It's the school tax. Let's consolidate the districts. Let's get rid of some supervisors. This isn't really a town of North Hempstead thing that we can do, but we can advocate for it. Uh, we can also work to reduce the amount of cronyism that happens, uh, where somebody loses an election and suddenly they're working at the Board of Elections for $180,000 a year. Uh, that's kind of wasteful as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so those three things, preserve our water, do more about climate change, and there are things we can do to reduce our taxes. All right, and we're going to have our closing statements now, and that'll be in the same order that it was before, starting with Ms. Lems. Well, I saved my thanks for the end. I really want to thank the League of Women Voters. They are the only organization on Long Island that makes sure to include candidates from every party as well as independent candidates. They sought me out at some great amount of trouble this year, <laughs> but they found me and they made sure I participated, whereas I have been excluded or attempted to be excluded from other candidates' forums. Um, the League, it does invaluable work. And so this is not just a pro forma thank you. I really am grateful for their existence. And I'm not sure why I haven't joined yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take your check tonight. <laughs> In any case, um, the reason it's so important is because on Long Island, you basically have your Democrats and your Republicans, and they run everything, and they make sure that everyone else is shut out. Uh, News coverage doesn't happen for third party candidates. Our names are mentioned at the end of articles. Also running is Cassandra Lemons on the green line. That's it. That's all. And it's one thing not to be endorsed. It's another thing not to be covered by the media or included in debates. Um, the two parties, there, there is a certain amount of corruption going on. There's a certain amount of cronyism where uh, I really think someone independent, like from a grassroots party, like the, the Green Party, or dare I say, even the lib Libertarians, um, could do a lot of good. Independent thinkers here who are not a part of any political machine. Thank you. Ms. Srivastava. Yeah, hi. Our cost of living is very high in town of North Hempstead. And I would like to bring my experience of a successful entrepreneur and use this for the benefit of the residents of my community. And I want our community to be a very desirable and affordable place to live. I want to work on cutting the taxes down. I would like to fight for that, cut wastage, manage your finances in a better way. I would like to have a very desirable town. I would like to have our children to say and to look at the town of North Hempstead as a, you know, as the future of American dream. I, I have that drive, I have that dream, and I have that dedication where I can work and serve the community and work for the betterment of the people of, and the residents of the community. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zuckerman. 
Well, first of all, I would also like to thank the League of Women Voters. You know, setting up a forum like this is truly special. I mean, to get, to have all the candidates up here and to allow the give and take and everyone responding, it really is what our electoral system is about. And you know, I take the right to vote very seriously. And I, regardless of who you vote for, you, everyone needs to come out and vote because it's very important. You know, I've been on this town board for almost six years and I am proud that I, it's proud to have served. And I can tell you that my background experience in education helps me every day make the, makes the, right, make the right decisions. You know, we have a town, we have over 230,000 people. You know, we are making decisions every day that affect people's lives. Many decisions that are not easy. Many decisions that require many hours of thought, research. It's not an easy job, but you have to want to do it. This isn't, you don't do this job for the money. I'm an attorney. Yeah. This is not why I do this job. I do this job because I want to help people. And I am proud to say that I've enjoyed serving in this capacity, and I look forward to serving for four more years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chang? Thank you. So I'll, I'll end this the way I started. I'm living the American dream. I came to America, and now I'm living the American dream. My kids get to live in North Hempstead, in this area, the great school districts, the great neighbors, the great environment. I've been working at, to protect this great environment that we live in for the kids, and I felt compelled to get involved because I think I could do more for the, for the town. I want to use my background, my experience, uh, to help the town. I've been a stay-at-home dad. My kids are all off to elementary school now. I have more time. I want to dedicate my time to helping the residents of North Hempstead. I think I have a unique background. I think I can contribute to this town. Again, I agree with Mr. Zuckerman. It's not about the money. I really want to serve the town. We preach about inclusion, diversity. I think we should have some inclusion and diversity on the town board as well. I am the first Asian American to run for office in, 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 on the town board. If I win, we will make history. We'll be the first, pres uh, first person to win an elected uh, position in Long Island. So I am representing the new wave of immigrants that come into this area. We want to live this term of quality of life that, that's here. We want to protect it. I want to work with everyone in this, in this great community to protect the way of life. I want to make it more efficient. I want to make sure that our future generation can stay here and, and live here, and our elderly can stay here as well. Because the way it's going right now, taxes are going up, our quality of life is going down, and the reason why all these developments want to come here is because they want to basically put their bubble inside our town. And that's going to overwhelm the infrastructure overwhelm the schools. My kids go to public school. I want to protect the public school. I want to protect the infrastructure. I, and I drive an electric car. I have solar in my house, so I'm also green. So just to <laughs> let you know, a Republican can be green as well. <laughs> Ms. Lurvey. So I want to close by thanking the League of Women Voters again and everybody in attendance for staying so late. Um, and also everybody up here for tonight's spirited debate, which is so critical to a well-functioning democracy. Um, as I said earlier, I never expected to be a town councilwoman. Um, but now, having had the privilege um, to serve in this office, my mission has been to really bring people together and to foster the solutions um, on all of the issues that we dis discussed tonight. Um, and in a time animated by you know, uncertainty, what is Google? Um, what is Amazon doing to our downtowns? You know, what is the next phase of our downtowns? Um, where are our taxes going? Just where is the cost of living going, right? Um, where are our children going to live? And it's a time of uncertainty, and I think that the approach that I bring to the table of building consensus has never been more important. Um, I'm running because I want to continue the work that I have been doing in office. And I also want to show my children what it means to serve in government and represent the residents and their needs. My parents came here as political refugees in 1965, and they taught me the importance of democracy and government. And now I am honored to participate in it. For a very long time, I was an activist, uh, focusing on local issues. Um, I was you know, on the PTA. I was a vice president in the temple. I was part of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I was co-founded and co-led North Shore Action. 
um, a local um, group focused on local issues. But I found out that there's only so much you can do as an activist, and there's so much more you can do in government. Um, and that's why I am here. Um, because now, you know, now is the, the time that we can really, really do some great things together. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Delamonte. I want to thank the League of Women Voters and all of you for being here th for tonight's debate. Tonight, you got to see firsthand critical choice that our community faces on November 5th. So here's what I want you to take away. I'm the Democratic candidate running for this seat. I will not be a rubber stamp to anybody, nor would Supervisor Bosworth ever ask me or expect me to be. In contrast to my opponent, I will not have a my way or a highway approach to local government. That leaves residents disappointed with the feeling that their voice does not matter. I'll not only get things done, but I'll involve everybody in the process and not just a select few. I know this community, I love this community, and I'm knowledgeable about the issues that our community faces. I will bring that perspective to Town Hall to help improve the quality of life for everybody, and I will work to keep our taxes and spending down. I opened earlier this evening by saying that the main reason I'm running is because everybody's voice matters. And I don't think my opponent reflects that. I'm asking for your vote because as the next council person, I will reflect that. It will be my top priority to make sure the town hall hears your voice and listens to you when shaping our vision forward. Thank you again for the opportunity to be with you tonight. Thank you, Mr. Giorgio. I love being the councilwoman in the district, in the sixth district. It's a fantastic job. Like Councilwoman Lurvie, when I first ran, I never imagined I'd be the councilwoman, and honestly, I didn't know what to expect. And it was a real challenge, and it's been a great eight years, and I've accomplished a lot. But there's a couple of things that I want to remind everyone of. Um, I work very well with the majority on the town board, and they work very well with me. We problem solve together. We often vote unanimously together. We support each other. I've been collaborative, civil, professional, and transparent. There are several people in this room who are my constituents, but most certainly not my supporters. And they know I have met with them, I've heard them, and I've worked with them to get projects done anytime they've asked me. I will continue to be that kind of elected official because that's my job. I believe that the best way that I can stand against the insanity of Washington, D.C. and make sure that our government represents you is to focus on local issues and concerns and concentrate on doing the job that I was elected to do and to lead by example in how I serve my community. My goal is to make sure that our community knows it can trust its local representative and that all your voices are in fact being heard. I advocate for every single one of my residents, Republicans, Democrats, independents, conservatives. It doesn't matter to me whether you voted for me or supported me. I think my body of work speaks for itself, and it really matters to me what is going on in the town. I hope that the way that I've led for the last eight years and all the hard work that I've done and all the times I've answered every email and phone call and met with residents matters to enough of you because it certainly matters a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you.